Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I'm going to give a lecture on problem solving for clinical psychology department. Now, what is problem solving? Problem solving is a mental process that involves discovering, analyzing, and solving problems. And the ultimate goal of problem solving is to overcome obstacles and find a solution that resolves the issues in the best possible manner. And there are few steps in problem solving. The first one, in order to correctly solve a problem, it is important to follow a series of steps. Many research refers to this as a problem solving cycle, which includes developing strategies and organizing knowledge. The first one is identifying the problem. While it may seem like an obvious step, identifying the problem is not always as simple as it sounds. In some cases, people might mistakenly identify the wrong source of a problem, which will make attempts to solve it inefficient or even useless. The second one is defining the problem. After the problem has been identified, it is important to fully define the problem so that it can be solved. Third one is forming a strategy. The next step is to develop a strategy to solve the problem. The fourth one, organizing information. Before coming up with a solution, we need to first organize the available information. The fifth one is allocating resources. Since we don't always have unlimited money as time to solve a problem, so appropriate resource should be allocated to solve it. And the sixth one is monitoring progress. Effective problem solvers tend to monitor their progress as they work towards a solution. Seventh one is evaluating the results. After solution has been reached, it is important to evaluate the results to determine if it is the best possible solution to the problem. Now, what are the blocks in problem solving? Trial and error learning. One of the most important early study of problem solving was conducted by Edward Lee Thorndike in 1911. And he conducted an experiment on animal, which is in how they so usually solve a problem. One set of experiments involved putting a hungry cat in into a puzzle box which with food uh, outside the box. And if the cat pulled a string which dangled from the roof of the box, the front of the box would open and the cat would escape and reach the food. Thorndike found that the more time a cat was, was placed in the box, the less time it would take to escape and he was able to plot a learning curve. And the second experiment, experiment was learning to learn, which is also known as learning set. Harry Frederick um, Har Harlow proposed a new method for measuring higher learning abilities of animals in 1949. Harlow suggested that humans and other highly intelligent animals not only mastered isolated tasks, but also noticed patterns and shortcuts that make them more efficient learners. And what is learning to learn? Learning to learn, which Harlow also called learning set, meant picking out a pattern from a series of learning experiences that a, then a creature might learn even faster when faced with a similar learning situation in the future. An example can be in humans. Humans would be learning, would be learning better study technique in college. After learning how to do a particular type of learning in one class, you might be faster to do the same sort of learning in another class. How did Harlow study learning set in resist money? Monkeys. Harlow's did one learning set experiment in which resist monkeys had to decide which of the two doors to open. If they select the correct door, they found food. If they select the other door, they found no food. The monkeys did, did not know that uh, there was a simple rule so the food was put behind the same door for six trials in a row. Each group of six trials was called a block. If the animals caught on to the pattern, then it should stop making errors on the second trial. Why would a smart animal eventually make no errors on trial two 
in each block of six. In accordance with the logic of the experiment, Harlow was interested in each animal's success rate on the trial two, in each set of the six trials. At first, animals performed poorly on the second trial. They guessed randomly or persisted in whatever worked during the previous session. As the experiment went along, some of the animals caught on the pattern. They started improving their odds of success on their second trial. A smart species like the restless monkeys improved its success rate on the second trial until it topped off at 100% after a few hundred trials. To less brilliant species, the pattern of the experiment was not so clear. Three shrews never caught on. So what have we learned from Harlow's experiment? Restless monkeys could develop a generalized learning set as a result of repeated exposure to tasks which involves trial and error learning. Instead of simply learning the solution to solve particular types of problems, it would develop a state of readiness set to solve a certain type of puzzle. And according to Gestalt psychologists, they challenged this idea, okay, the previous theories, that all problem solving was a matter of trial and error learning. Although past experience could be important in helping the pro to solve a problem, the Gestalt psych uh, psychology showed that it could also hinder it by establishing um, inappropriate mental sets. Lunching refers to this fixed habit of mind as Aston Lung and describe how it prevented people from looking at problems clearly and gaining insight into the neighbor into the nature of the problem. And what are the types of problem solving? First, there is well-defined problem. What are these kind of problems? They are always correct, okay? They always have correct answers and they always follow certain procedures and will always lead to solution. An ill-defined problem, on the other hand, they have parts to solution is unclear and no one correct answer. What are the strategies of problem solving? Working forward is the way of approaching a problem by starting from initial state and advancing forwards towards the goal state. So in working forwards problem solving, the way of approaching a problem is from starting to the initial state and advancing, advancing forwards towards the goal state. And the second one is working backwards, okay? The second strategy is working backwards. It is the way of advancing backwards from the goal state. Let's give an example. Met is one of the first domains where we learn how to work backward. Let's consider two following math problems. First problem is a car park has a maximum capacity of 75 cars. What is the two third of its capacity? And the second problem is a car park currently has 50 cars parking. And we know that this is only two third of its maximum capacity. What is its maximum capacity then? I'll give you five minutes to solve this problem. Okay, the first problem was a car park has a maximum capacity of 75 cars. What is the two third of its capacity? So in this problem, the 75 cars is known as the initial state. Okay, it's known in the initial state and the relation to the goal state is operation with two third. The solution is times 75 and two third, which is working forward. The second problem, a car park currently has 50 cars parking. We know that this is only two thirds of its maximum capacity. What is its maximum capacity then? So in this second problem, the 50 cars in the known, is the known goal state and the relation to maximum capacity, unknown that is the unknown initial state is two thirds. 
the solution is to know one third of maximum capacity first and then derive the whole which is working backward and this is known as working backward problem uh, solving strategy thank you